My mother, she used to mop offices in town. Each office she mopped, she was given 1,000 Ugandan shillings. Hmm. She collected that money and took me to school. Her dream was to see me graduate, which came, came to pass. Mujewale, Mujewale, Mujewale. My name is Bane Kibuka and welcome to another episode of the Ugandan Ball Talk Show. Yeah, welcome once again to the Ugandan Ball Talk Show. I have another guest today and we're going to hear some stories and about his life and everything that he's doing. But before we go into that, I'm very happy and excited, and I want to thank everybody, all my listeners, uh, subscribers. This week, we were able to hit 400 subscribers, and we want to thank everybody that is participating in um, subscribing, listening to this podcast, and everybody that's loving, supporting, encouraging, and also helps us in sharing and telling people about this podcast. So I couldn't have done this without all of you. And like I said in my post on the social media, on a special note, I want to thank people like Jocelyn and Comfort and my cousin David, because they pushed this 400 a lot and uh, towards this week, they helped me to hit that. So I want to thank you. And now we're looking forward to the 500. So thank you very much. In today's episode, I'm so excited to host a man who is doing a great job in Uganda. He's helping a lot of people like he's going to tell us today. And uh, he has some cool stories. So welcome to the show, Elijah. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for hosting me. Uh, how is life in Uganda? Life, not easy. Yeah. But we are believing God and we are moving God. Just that is believing God every day, yeah. yeah, to make it another day. That is good, and I'm so excited to have you here. And I'll let our listeners know that if there is anything, any technical problem, audio issues, you'll excuse us because our guest today is from Uganda, and he is using the internet, and Uganda doesn't have that very great internet. So you'll excuse us if there is anything that happens along the show, but we pray nothing happens. So Elijah. What are your full names? Like, I know you're Elijah Love. Is that your real name? Because I know you're from Uganda, and Uganda, they don't <laughs> name somebody just Elijah Love. <laughs> My name is Mokasa Kwagaleria. Uh-huh. I'm a Muganda. But did a mom? And I'm Nedida Fumbe. Fum- oh, Fumbe. From the clan of Fumbe, yeah. Banson you, Banson you, Akonja Kaja. Yeah, Mokasa. I- Mokasa. There's a guy that I knew, uh, Mukasa, but I thought I thought he was from Mamba Clan. I don't know. I think that's where I get it from. He's a friend of mine called Mukasa Richard, so that's why I, yeah. I said uh, one Mamba. But um, so where are you from in Uganda? Just like you, I'm from a small village, a slum in Naboil in U- yeah. Africa, Uganda. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a slum yeah. where well, I was raised since I was young. Yeah, I raised by a single mother in that slum. Yeah, mm. I'm from Nawe. Wow. Yeah, uh, I grew up in Uganda for over 21 years, so I know how slums are. And like, yeah, when people talk about slums in Uganda or slums in Africa. It's not the same slum you can. I mean, it could be same, but like the life in the slum is really hard. So. I'm really hard, yeah. I'm I'm happy to hear from you and to hear from somebody who has lived in the slum. Um, so have you ever been on an interview or a podcast before, or this is your first podcast? This is my third podcast. Okay. You said the third or the first? The third. Oh, the third. Okay. Yeah. What what other podcasts have you been on? I was hosted on a TV show when okay. I won as the video director of the year. Nice. It was on Dream TV and uh yeah, I did. I and then on uh, Fresh TV. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I know you told me when we were talking on WhatsApp that you were film director. So I'm actually gonna ask you about that later. But uh, I'm happy to hear that and uh, congratulations on winning that. It, I won. Uh, I, it was in 2019 when I won. Yeah, the director of the year. Yeah. 
yeah. legit yeah. awards. Yeah. Nice. Uh, congratulations on that achievement, my brother. Thank um, you. Thank you. I hosted so. Jocelyn in the last episode, and I know you and her are friends, and either you go to the same church or some, something like that. Yeah, we go to the same church. We've been friends for long. Yeah. Uh, she was helping me when she was in Uganda with the organization, reaching out to people with food, uh, reaching out to the community. Yeah, we, we are all doing things together. Nice. And I know you are friends with, uh, or you you have access to Pastor Wilson Bugembe. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, he's my pastor. Okay. Yeah, he's my pastor. Yeah. Because I, I, I hosted her and one of the last questions I asked was like, hey, you're going to help us bring Pastor Wilson Bugembe to the show? And she was like, oh, that's a little bit hard. But actually, the funny <laughs> thing, if, if you listen to the last episode, I told her that um, I used to see Pastor Wilson when I was in Uganda because a friend, my cousin, Freddie, he's a close friend to Pastor Wilson and I would meet. Actually, that's how I met, you know, a guy called Mag Ivan? He's a worshiper. Yes, I know Mark Ivan. Yeah, yeah. Mark Ivan and, and I we were so close before I came to the United States. Um, and he told me about his dream to be a worshiper. And now he's a great, I see him on uh, Facebook. We don't talk as often as we did. But yeah, him and mm. I were so close before I came to, to America. But anyway, sticking to your story, how is how you told us about your life background. Did you ever go to school, uh, high school? And, all that, where did you go? Yeah, I went to school and I graduated with a bachelor's of mass communication. Nice. Yeah, I went to my 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 primary, I went to Melody Junior Academy, uh-huh. my secondary to Heritage College, and then university, I went to Central Lens University. So you talked about living in the slum. You are the yeah. person who has a great experience and life that went you went through in the slum and uh yes what are some of the hardships that you went through living in a slum it's hard like you hear the word slum uh when it rains uh-huh. water floods in the houses yeah. means when you're sleeping you have to wake up and collect water from the house so you can get a place where you can sleep uh-huh. uh my mother waked up every day in the early morning uh, to go to town to look for money so we go to school she used to mop offices in town. Each, each office she mopped, she was given 1,000 Ugandan shillings. Hmm. She collected that money and took me to school. Her dream was to see me graduate, which came, came to pass. Yeah. Uh, slums, people, most people, fathers, mothers, they don't work. They spend all day taking alcohol. Uh, so my, my, my most worry when I was growing up was the young generation, the kids they have given birth to. And I was like, my dream is to help these people achieve a dream, achieve a future that I'm working on now. And I started an organization called Erahim Cares Foundation. We look after needed children and needed mothers, mostly those in slums. And so far now, we have... We, we have 40 kids, kids we are looking after, and we have a children's choir called Erahim Children's Choir, and uh, they are working on, a, a, I think, now two songs. Yeah. Nice. Uh, actually, that's, that's why I went back to your story, because I know that it's because of your personal story that forced yeah. you to do this organization, Elhim Cares Foundation, that you started. And I think it's yeah. because, like I said, it's because of what you personally went through, like growing up in the slums. And I, I was yeah. just sharing. And every time I hear a story of a young man, oh, like I call you young man, because but we are the same age or something like that. But I hear of my age mates, my fellow youth, yeah, yeah, yeah. standing in that position to come out and help other kids. It, it gives me a lot of energy that at least our generation we're being there and that's that's the whole reason i said this podcast i wanted to host people like you who are doing things that some people might not notice you know and mm-hmm. on this podcast i don't host i mean i can host or when i get a chance i will like host celebrities and people who with no names but like people like you who is not a celebrity but you're doing something bigger 
for a country. And that's the reason why I said this podcast. Like I host people like you who nobody knows, but like coming here and share your story about the things that you're doing for the community. So I want to applaud you and appreciate whatever you do. So you told Thank us, you, my brother. Yeah, you told us you take care of these needy children and mothers in the slum. So like, what are some of the activities that you do for these people? Like, let's say it's a Monday, you're going to go to the community. What do you do with the kids? As we meet with the kids, they rehearse for choir rehearsal. They go for the camp for choir rehearsal at the children's center. Uh-huh. And uh, of now, they have uh, produced two songs, good yeah. songs. We are soon releasing them. They rehearse. They do football. Uh, we do, they do morning devotions where they devote to God. They pray. They preach themselves. And uh, many other activities. Yeah, that's, that's very good because I know... Some of those things kids in the slum won't have. Like, you know, yeah. they won't have. Like, I know when I was growing up, we didn't have money to buy a soccer ball. And I wanted to play soccer or football, or we call football. Yeah, yeah. But, and that's, I tell me in my story, like, I wanted to buy a soccer ball, but I couldn't. And I ended up just stealing money to buy a ball, you know? And like, really? you having that opportunity for kids to come and play football uh, without yes. them having to go and steal money you know that's a good thing and that's a plus so I really appreciate you again for that and qu- talk about choir um, in America recently I hosted a choir from one organization from Uganda I don't know if you've ever yeah. heard of them Money Children's Choir I don't know if you've heard of them they're from Lugala Masanaf and I've not heard of them yeah, and they sing. And so that is something bigger, actually, like you, the choir you're making, it will grow bigger and then they can travel and sing in different places. I'm sure that's, that's one that's of the our goals. Prayer. Yeah. yeah, that's our prayer, that we worship God and travel the world, mm-hmm. worshiping God and touching yeah. God's for, for Christ. You told me that um, you managed to take 20 kids to school this year. Oh, last year, like off kids who were orphans. Um, how were yeah, you able yeah. to do that, and uh, how did you get those twenty kids? Uh, we met these kids. Most most of these kids, I found them at the age of uh, of death, at the age of suffering. Uh, we went to. I remember I would share some of the stories. We were giving out giving out food to the community to the people that don't eat our food in during COVID, first COVID, and we found a family. They lost their father years back. Kids dropped out of school. They sleep uh, on, on the floor with blankets, no nets, and they are water fried with, her, with, with water. They had spent days without eating. They don't go to school. So I was like, I'll pick on these kids. Uh, I'll work hard. So I take them back to school so they have a good life. And I'm glad one of, uh, the, one of their sister, their siblings, uh, did P7 and got a second grade. Nice. And Angel. Nice. Angel not, not she, And then the other lost the father, was knocked down. I, I took her, I took her on. And then the other, I found her. She was living in a house. And her mother is a drunkard. Her sisters, they, they, they do all the obscene things in the house. They have sex in the house. They do everything. And this kid is watching. So I was like, if this kid makes 15 years, she wouldn't have a future. So I choose to pick also that, that kid on. And then the other, the mother is a prostitute. And uh, she, the, the, the young girl sees the mother coming in with, uh, with different men every day. Mm-hmm. To, to just, to, to, they do the, she does this so she can get food for the kid. I also picked on that kid. So that's how I go pick on uh, these kids, orphans, those that are, uh, are so exposed to obscenity. Yeah. yeah, that's how I pick up the kids. Yeah. My brother, Elijah, I don't know if you know what you're doing to these kids' lives. And uh, something like that is something I'm passionate about and something yeah, I yeah. love to do and touching other kids' lives. You know, you were sharing stories and I think tears just started coming out of my eyes you know like I know the feeling I know because I've lived there I didn't grow up in the slum but I've seen friends that came from a slum 
I've seen kids that are suffering. I've seen kids that are orphans. Um, my like in on my podcast, I hosted my dad. He has a girls' home, and he does similar things like picking up girls and the abandoned, abused. And you listen to these kids' stories, and their their stories are all different, but like they're all suffering. And a country like Uganda, where you're not expecting help from anybody unless somebody with a kind heart like yours come up and pick these people up uh and these these kids will just end up suffering and like what you said growing up in bad environments and you coming out to help them pick them out of that environment so i want to thank god for people like you that stand up for these kids and um, to go and to go so it was it's it was covid and i know there was a lockdown in uganda a lot of families were starving a lot of families were not working and you told me you served over 200 families how were you able to do that like how how were you able to get the finances or the way to help these 200 families get food some of the money i went worked with my aunts got the money I chose to give it out to people. I chose to buy food. So I saved lives in the, in the slums. Mm-hmm. I even I talked to my friends in Uganda and abroad. They sent me some money, I added up, and uh, we bought food. Over 200 families received food. And uh, what touched my heart a lot is someone, you give someone two kilograms of posho, two mm-hmm. kilograms of maize flour, and they are so happy. They even want to cry. They have spent days without eating. That touched my heart a lot. It was like, these people, these people are really, really dying. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I definitely understand that. I don't know if our listeners, especially like the ones in the United States, uh, the ones mm-hmm. like people who are listening to this podcast in all the developed countries. Um, I don't know if you really can feel what Elijah is trying to talk about here, but there are people who even without COVID, they can't get food. And now when COVID hits, it's tough. So when you give somebody posho, most most people even don't know what posho is. Posho is like corn flour. Like people in the US, you know, corn, you take corn to the granary and they make it out of flour. And the way you prepare it, you cook it with um, hot water and make something similar to mashed potato. And you can eat that with beans and some families don't have money to even fry their beans so they just eat boiled beans with salt and that's yeah, why yeah, yeah. they eat for food and that's that's what elijah was serving out because he himself is using his own money so he can't afford to buy meat for everybody but he can afford to yeah. buy something beans small and, yeah fun, beans yeah. and portion for somebody to have yeah. some food to eat uh what are some of the challenges that you are facing while running this organization? And um, what, what are some of the things that you, you go through or you struggle with? It's, it's hard because the need is too much and yet the, the finances are so small. So the first challenge, I would say, finances, they are so little, yet the need is too much. Mm-hmm. I would love to help the, the old village, I would like to help everyone suffering, but sometimes you can't because uh, the finances are not enough. Right. And then the other challenge, the location, the residence, rent. Sometimes you rent here, they chase you away, you go to another residence. And then you need, you need a question where these kids can come and stay. I stay with some, uh-huh. but uh, some most times rent is an issue. And then uh, the, the other challenge, I, I would call it uh, long journeys. These kids that come for rehearsals, they walk for long journeys coming. I think those are some of the challenges. Um, I definitely understand relate uh, kids who want a good life, but like something like singing, kids who want to practice singing and they see that as an opportunity and they have to like travel for a long distance to to come get out of, even kids who want to play soccer or what we call football in Uganda. I remember when I was young, like I would try to find somewhere they're playing football and you can walk like two miles to go find the, a place where to play football. But I feel like in this, like something like uh, transportation, you know, like 
even if it's not buying a cow, like just finding, getting transportation that could help a lot to the kids. So at this point is like, if there's anybody listening and listening to these stories for all these kids and wants to stand with Elijah, I'm sure Elijah will have, uh, give us his contacts uh, about the ministry and where people can donate money or where people can go to find out information about uh, this foundation and get to know more about it and hear from Elijah. But before I leave that, it's like one of the things I think about, like you said, you stay with some kids. I think about medication. Um, how do you handle medication when kids get sick? Medication, I, I have a doc, I have doctors that I talk okay. to. Sometimes they treat these kids and I have to pay later because I don't have my money right there. Right. And sometimes I have my money in my pockets. I pick and pay the mm-hmm. doctor so these kids can have a good life and they can live happy with joyous. That's uh, something I was thinking about in the back of my head. I'm like, yeah, like, like kids get sick and yeah, you yeah. have to it's struggle. Hard, it's hard. No, you know, you know like, kids, it's hard. Every other time they are sick. We have one called Waswa. Yeah. He's disabled. Most times he's always in hospitals. They call mm-hmm. me every, almost every, after two weeks. He's disabled. Uh, he can't. They can't find a wheelchair for for him. Right. Because uh, uh, it's uh, the back with whatever which will, with the wheelchairs they get, mm-hmm. they affect. They affect uh, his back. Yeah. 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 So they can't find a wheelchair for, for him. That's sad, man. That's sad just to hear that story of uh, he has a kid disabled, but he can't even find something to make him walk. You know. You told me about starting a mother's project and equipping mothers with skills to give them capital. That's something I think about yeah. because like country like Uganda, you can't just keep feeding people, giving them food. You need to teach them yeah. how to create their own food. So what are you yeah. looking at in starting the mother's project? I'm actually looking for capital to start up, to start up this. Mm-hmm. I want to buy a sewing machine. They're called uh, tailoring machines. Mm-hmm. And I want to buy the, the machine that makes cakes. And I want to buy, a, and I want to get trainers to buy saloon things, to teach them how to do saloon, do tailoring, and do cakes and bakery. Mm-hmm. So we equip them with these skills. If we get money, we give them capital. They go start over their lives mm-hmm. with the skill lifetime skills that can help them run their families financially and uh, get back their kids to school so that can't that, that, that will get money you give you give you back your kid so you take him or her to school i think that's a good idea and that helps people to run their own families and take care of their uh, their kids. There's a story. I don't know if you've already talked about it. You shared it yesterday on WhatsApp and was talking about a lady that was abandoned by her husband that she told you that you brought her. You shared it yesterday on your WhatsApp. Do you still remember that story? Yeah. This story touched me a lot. All, I, I, I cried. I shed yeah. tears. There is a girl. She came, uh, she, she, came to the, she came to the choir and she was new. So I was like, where are you from? I was like, I'm from, I'm from the other side of the slum. And so I was like, tell me about your story. She told me my mother goes to town. Someone gives her soda. She goes tax to tax, selling this soda. And each bottle she sells, she gets 200 shillings. And she takes back the money to the owner of the soda, the other main money. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when I asked about the kid, about the dad, the kid just cried. I felt bad, but I was like, I'm now your dad, cry no more. She was like, I've never seen my dad in my entire life. The mother told me the dad left that baby when she was five months. And the girl now is uh, in, uh, in P- P6, 13 years. She has yeah. never seen a father in her life. And wow. all our siblings, and when the mother the mother was sharing the story of the how the father treated treated her and the kids, the mother just cried. She couldn't even complete the story because it was so painful. Yeah. So we chose as an organization 
to help this kid out with school and she immediately joined the choir. Hmm. Yeah. That's 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 really it's called nice. Namubiru, Namubiru Dafin. Namubiru Dafin. Yeah. That's really good that you help um, people like that in that kind of situation. Now, do you work with any church or do you work with any other person or like who is behind this ministry besides you? Uh, I, I, it, it is a dream that I had since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I talk to friends. Actually, my friends at church, my pastor. I just talk to friends. Mm-hmm. And these friends give me give me what they can and also add on. That's how I manage to run. Yeah. But it's yeah. just uh, my pastor helps me out when he gets money mm-hmm. and friends. Yeah. Like, oh, is this a registered uh, foundation or company or organization? Or what's that like? And do you have a website too? It's just like the government. Okay. And we have a Facebook page. It's mm-hmm. called Erohim Cares Foundation. Yeah. And I also run every story and every activity on my Facebook page. Okay. Elijah Love, a Keto Slam Boy. We mm-hmm. don't have a website yet, yet, but we're working on it because it's in Uganda opening up a website. It's so expensive. People that yeah. just open up. Yeah. So we are paying slowly, slowly by slowly till we finish the money and mm-hmm. they, they open it up. Yeah. yeah, that's that's really good. And Elijah, I want to thank you for sharing those stories of those kids and what you're doing. And we are praying that people who will listen yeah. to this podcast or listen to this episode will be able to stand in and come give you a hand in whatever it is, in any way they can. If somebody knows how to make a website, he can reach out to you mm. and help you with that. If somebody can donate money, he can reach out to you and to... But personally, I want to thank you for standing in that position to help other kids. Because people might run away Amen. from, but you picked yourself yeah. to say, I'll stand in here and be the light for these kids. Now, going into your personal life, like besides Elhim Foundation, uh, you said you're a filmmaker. How did you get the passion to do film? Yes, I, I joined church when I was a young boy. Okay. So there was a, 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 a my friend called Mark Roger. He was doing videos at church. Mm-hmm. So I got interested. So he taught me how to do the camera and everything. So I picked up the passion and I chose to. I was doing it at church, shooting pasta, shooting the, the summons of pasta. And then I, I was like, I can make this as my career. Mm-hmm. So I, I learned more on YouTube. I learned more. I equipped myself. Yeah, and now I think uh, I I'm now doing some cool work. I think yeah. Well, tell us about some of the things you've created. Like what some of the things you've made ever since you learned how to do film. Yes, I do videos. Mm-hmm. I do commercial adverts. Yeah, and I do documentaries and mm-hmm. I shoot functions, yeah, weddings and everything. If you you've seen Pastor Gambe's video, yeah. the new video called Oluzi, mm-hmm. and the man behind it. If I know the mask was a song, uh, most of his videos and the man behind it, then and then uh, we have uh, there is a, a, an American called Angelica from California. Yeah. Uh, I have, I think, now uh, two projects, two mm. projects with her, three projects with her, uh, three videos, music videos with her. That's that's some great work there. I've, yeah, I've watched some of Pastor Bogembe, Pastor Wilson Bogembe's videos and. Yeah, that's yeah. some good work right there. Um, I, I do the one night prayers. If you follow Pastor Wilson Bugembe, I'm the producer of the one night prayers. If you one night prayers, yeah, it's oh, every okay. Wednesday Pastor Wilson records the one night prayer and puts them on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Facebook account. I've, I've yeah. seen those. I've seen. I'm the guy that records. On that very note, I told Joseph I wanted to host Pastor Wilson again. so I want to ask you this question: mm-hmm. What would it take? to tell Pastor Wilson Bogembe that there's this boy in the U.S. that has a show called the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. He has actually met you and him and I have met, but I don't think he remembers me because it's been like seven years that we met. And oh, we took yeah. the picture together. But I wanted to host Pastor Wilson Bogembe here because he, he, he has been in my life for a long time that he doesn't know because he's a very busy man yeah. but like his songs that he used to sing my brother would sing all the songs of Bruce Mugambi like at home but 
I want to host him on my podcast. He just come and sit with me for like 20 minutes and just interview oh. him about his life. So I want to give you the task of connecting me to Pastor Wilson Bogembe. And one day I'll have him on the podcast. I'm going to connect you. It's as he's as telling him about the show. Yeah. And he's a good man. Yeah. He's a very, he'll just, he'll just connect with you right away. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. And that's a promise. All my listeners, I have listened to Elijah promise us that he's going to bring Pastor Wilson Bogambe. What's something you've learned out of life, everything you've been through, everything you've done? Mm -hmm. What's one thing that you say, this is my life lesson? My life lesson is everything will vanish away, like the expensive cars, the beautiful wives, the beautiful people. But God will remain standing. Nice. It's like you see a rich man with cars, houses, and everything, but they don't like God. They don't even want to know about God and his people. Uh, one thing I know in life, if you have Jesus, you have everything. The reason I help these people, because I know God blesses people that choose to help others. Mm -hmm. And the greatest commandment in the Bible is love. Choose to show love to others. Choose to help the needy. The Bible says, whoever helps the needy lends to God. So I choose my life to lend to God all my life, to help the needy, to help the orphans, to help the single mothers, teenage mothers. Give all my life to them because I know God called me to do this and it's my purpose. The reason why I was born so I choose to call upon people that have kind hearts to join, help people. Let's, let's do this and go with surely bless all of us. Yeah, I hope all our listeners have had that and listened to that. And one final question mm -hmm. before I let you go is, what gets you excited about life? Like when I saw Angel, the girl I shared it about coming up with a second grade, she had no hope for school. And the other girl is called Teddy. She got a, a, she didn't study so well because she was always just from school. Till when I joined in to help with school fees, she got a third grade. When I saw these kids happy about their future, smiling when they got their results, now, now, now preparing to go to the high school, that made that makes my life happy makes give gives joy to my heart nothing can beat that answer and especially when the answer is not just about you it's about somebody mm -hmm. else like seeing yeah, other people yeah. happy makes you happy seeing other people so, happy and achieving their future right so elijah yeah. i want to thank you very much for sacrificing this time to come and sit down with mm -hmm. me and talk about uh your elohim cares foundation and about your life and everything mm -hmm. So I can't wait to host you again here, hear more stories on what you've done and coming back here and telling us, hey, now I run the Mother's Project. It's running everything. The Mother's wow, Project like, wow, giving wow. testimonies. So I want to thank you very much. And uh, hopefully people will get something to take away from this practice. Thank you so much, Bonnie. I appreciate it. Thank you for this opportunity. This encourages me, Lord. This means millions, millions things to me. Thank you for the good heart and the unkind heart and choosing to come out to all people like us that choose to do God's will and to serve the needy in the communities. Hey there, I am Bonnie Kibuka, the host of the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Thanks for watching my video and don't forget to hit subscribe and share with a friend. Tune in every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time for a new episode about my podcast. And for more information about this podcast, follow me on my Instagram page, talk underscore show underscore 256.